Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will be discussing about the following topics. First, field of a particular half wave dipole antenna. Then we will be discussing about the power radiated by a half wave dipole antenna. After that, we will find the radiation resistance of a half wave dipole antenna. And after that, we are going to find the directivity of a half wave dipole antenna. So here, I mentioned one term very much which is a half wave dipole antenna so before we go into all these topics we need to know what a half wave dipole antenna is so what is a half wave dipole antenna let's find out so here i have drawn a diagram of a dipole antenna so as mentioned earlier a dipole antenna is an antenna which has got two metallic wires which are identical to each other and here it forms two poles that is a positive pole and a negative pole and therefore this does is a dipole antenna so when is this dipole said to be a half wave dipole antenna this dipole antenna is said to be a half wave dipole antenna when the overall length of this dipole antenna is equal to lambda by 2. That is when the length of this antenna equals to half of the wavelength generated by this antenna then that particular dipole antenna is said to be a half wave dipole antenna just like the name suggests. So now let's have a quick look at what all topics we will be discussing today. First we will be discussing about the field that is the electric field that is generated by a half wave dipole antenna. Then the average radiated power density which can be obtained simply obtained by using W average is equal to half of the real part of E cross H. So then the power radiated is nothing more than the surface integral of this average radiated power density over the particular surface and then we can easily find the radiation resistance and directivity of a half wave dipole antenna. So first, for a half wave dipole antenna, the electric field produced by that particular antenna is given by the formula E is equal to 60 I0 divided by R, the whole into cos of pi by 2 cos theta divided by sine theta. The whole expression is in the direction of A theta. That is the whole expression for the field, that is the electric field is in the direction of A theta. So then if this is the expression for the electric field, then the average radiated power density is given by the formula W average is equal to half the value of E cross H as we mentioned earlier. So now here the electric field is in the direction of theta whereas the magnetic field is in the direction of phi. So therefore, this expression can be written as half of the real part of E theta which is in the direction of A theta cross H can be written that is the magnetic field can be written as E theta divided by eta which is in the direction of A phi. So here E theta is a constant and eta which is the intrinsic impedance is also a constant. So therefore, taking the value of this out we get the value of WAVG as 1 by 2 eta the whole into E theta squared by taking the constants out. So now inside the cross product we have A theta cross A phi. We know that A theta cross A phi is A r. So this happens in the direction of A r. So this is the average radiated power density. So now, what is the radiated power? The radiated power is nothing more than the surface integral of this average power radiation density, the whole over a particular surface. So the radiated power can be written as P rad is equal to surface integral of W average over a particular surface area which equates to double integral where phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi and theta is equal to 0 to pi 1 by 2 eta into e theta squared which is in the direction of a r and because it is a surface integral we should write r squared sine theta d theta d phi. So that is how we get the radiated power. So now, 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 we know that this E theta is the same as this electric field E. So what we have to do now is we have to substitute the value of this inside this E theta squared. So what does this equation become then? 
it becomes double integral of phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi theta is equal to 0 to pi r squared sin theta by 2 eta the whole into 60 squared i0 squared divided by r squared cos squared of whole of pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin squared theta the whole integral with respect to d theta d phi that is what it becomes because the value of e is given as 60 i 0 divided by r into cos of pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin theta the whole direction of a theta the whole value becomes a square when it is substitute here and therefore substituting this in this we get this so here there is no integration term for phi so therefore integration of 0 to 2 pi d phi becomes 2 pi so substituting all those values and equating everything here the r squared r squared term gets cancelled and therefore we get the value of this approximately equal to 36.56 i0 squared so that is the value of the power radiated so why did we find the power radiated because only if we know the power radiated can we find the radiational resistance how is that because the power radiated is also equal to half i0 squared into r where that r is the radiational resistance so by comparing these two equations together we can get the radiational resistance how is that come on let's find out so as I said, the value of P rad is given as P rad is equal to half I0 squared into RR. Half I0 squared into RR, where this RR is the radiation resistance. But in the previous equation, we also saw that the value of this P rad is equal to 36.56 I0 squared. So therefore, equating these two, what do we get? 36.56 i0 squared is equal to half i0 squared into rr and hence as a result of this we get rr is equal to twice of 36.56 therefore rr is equal to 73 ohm this is the radiation resistance of a half wave dipole antenna so next let us find the directivity the directivity of this antenna is given by the equation 4 pi into u max divided by p rad so what is u max u max is the maximum intensity that this particular antenna can generate and p rad just like we found out before p rad is equal to 36.56 i0 square so for that we have to find the value of the maximum intensity that this antenna can create and for that first we need to find the value of the intensity average intensity so the value of intensity is given by the formula u of theta is equal to half of r squared into e theta squared the whole divided by eta that is the value of u so now substituting the value of this e theta from the first equation that we found that is the electric field substituting that in this we get the value of this u theta as u theta is equal to 15 i0 squared cos squared pi by 2 cos theta divided by pi into sin squared theta so now what is the maximum value of this then the maximum value of this is when cos squared theta becomes 1 and sin squared theta becomes 1 so that is equal to 15 i0 squared divided by pi that is the maximum value of the intensity so therefore substituting the value of this in the equation for directivity we just saw that directivity d is given as 4 pi into u max divided by p rad which is equal to 4 pi into 15 i0 squared divided by pi divided by 36.56 i0 squared which then becomes 60 divided by 36.56 which is then equal to 1.64 this thus is the directivity of a particular half wave dipole antenna this thus sums up a basic idea of the field generated and then the directivity as well as the radiation resistance of a half wave dipole antenna along with the power radiated by it so i hope you guys have understood the topics uh, discussed in today's session if you guys have any doubts as always, please do mention those in the comment section. So, I'll see you guys in the upcoming videos. Stay tuned for the rest of the topics of this section. Thank you.